cheaper technology than spinning an entire vehicle and crew. You don't live on the artificial gravity centrifuge, you visited it. For 45 minutes to an hour every day or so, astronauts on their way to Mars could strap themselves in and get enough gravity to maintain muscles and bone strength. Okay, we are almost ready to start. Right now there's one hitch. It has some unpleasant and possibly dangerous side effects. Are you okay? Yeah, ready. The brain gets a level of what we call sensory conflict and reacts to it by all of the symptoms of motion sickness. People get motion sickness on Young's machine because it's compact. It has to spin very quickly to create artificial gravity. Coming off Young's machine, an astronaut can get seasick. To fix that, researchers watch the test subject's eyes through tiny cameras. What we see is vertical eye movements, which tells us that he and his brain is confused. He thinks he's tumbling head over heels when he is spinning in a circle on the centrifuge. What really gets the brain confused is spinning and turning the head. And on a mission to Mars, astronauts may have to do just that. Crew member, confused and seasick for even a short while, is not an option. While Young and his team perfect their centrifuge, researchers in California have built their own gravity generator, a space cycle. A person pedaling gets a traditional workout. The spinning passenger actually gets up to five times Earth's gravity. We may find out that uh, hypergravity training actually accelerates the training effect. You may have to spend less time doing it. Even if the technology to create artificial gravity is finally mastered, waiting in deep space is another, more deadly, invisible force. Microscopic bits of matter can blast right through the skin of the spacecraft and through the bodies of the people inside. As a crew bound for Mars passes into deep space, leaving the protective cocoon of Earth's magnetic field, the bombardment of their spacecraft begins. An invisible and dangerous force passes through the skin of the spacecraft and the bodies of the people inside. On your way to Mars, you are gonna get zapped very severely with lots of radiation. The microscopic threat is created by dying stars exploding supernovas. The blast propels carbon, iron, and uranium, the founding elements of our world, out across the universe at close to the speed of light. It's cosmic radiation. It can be lethal, and it's inescapable. I turn my head 90 degrees. I'd see little contrails going by. I'd say, OK, I'm getting hit by something. Jerry Leninger, an astronaut and medical doctor, could sense cosmic radiation invading his body. Whatever ill effects that radiation might have is obviously increasing day by day by day when you're out there in space. Sometimes at night, I, I used to sleep on a wall. I used to sleep upside down on the wall, close my eyes, and all of a sudden I'd see flash, you know, flash, flash. Sort of looked like a pinpoint light, very bright. Jeffrey Hoffman. Another former astronaut had similar reactions to cosmic radiation during 1,200 hours in space. I would be sitting there with my eyes closed and these fireworks, celestial fireworks, would be going off in my brain. And you know, you, you realize, yeah, this is cosmic radiation. Lininger and Hoffman react to their cosmic radiation exposure with the expected astronaut bravery. But their health could yet pay a price. Cancer. Cosmic rays pierce cells, damaging DNA strands. The damaged DNA becomes mutated and cancerous when it can't repair itself completely and multiplies itself millions of times. They're going to probably take older people on that mission to Mars. I don't think it's going to be the 35-year-old person because the lifetime cancer risk when that person comes back is going to be very high. So you have to tell them that risk up front, maybe take an older, healthy person, and you live with that cancer risk when you get back.
cancer is a long-term threat. The short-term health danger for astronauts is equally frightening, brain damage. Engine throttle back. The area of the brain most vulnerable is the part that's vital to learning and memory. Terra Nova Houston, we show all systems nominal. NASA is using one of the largest tools on Earth, a particle accelerator, to learn more about the effects of cosmic radiation. Researcher Marcelo Vasquez loads a liquid containing brain cells into the accelerator. The accelerator is buried underground. Put simply, it's a huge circular racetrack for subatomic particles. Powerful magnets placed around the track accelerate the particles to half the speed of light. The speeding particles smash into the brain cell samples. This is how cosmic rays in outer space enter the brains of astronauts. Okay, we are ready for a next, next exposure. Vasquez wants to know how many direct hits human brain cells can take. He's got bad news for astronauts involved in a long-haul mission to Mars. Very low doses of this cosmic ray can destroy brain cells. Cosmic rays can leak through Earth's magnetic field. Astronaut Jerry Leninger was hit by cosmic rays while on space station Mir inside Earth's orbit. There was no place to hide. You are going to get zapped with lots of radiation. Uh, try to get behind a lead battery, try to cover up, do whatever I could. You just have to live with it. So far, Leninger has suffered no long-term effects. But in deep space, taking the full force of the radiation, a Mars crew would be susceptible to brain damage. A crew member with a shaky memory and a sudden learning disability could endanger the mission. The only solution is to find a material that can shield the spacecraft. But that's not as easy as it sounds. You're not going to be able to shield the vehicle unless you make it out of lead, and you just can't launch a vehicle like that. Lead is far too heavy, but NASA must find a better shielding material if they're going to Mars. The search for a new lightweight shielding material is going on here at NASA's research lab in Langley, Virginia. Four, five, six, okay. Okay, so this is specimen number one. We're studying this for our radiation shielding project. So we're gonna, we're gonna pull it in tension. You've got it loaded, Steve? Yes. Before materials engineer Sheila Thibault can sign off on a material to protect astronauts from the deadly atmosphere at deep space, it has to meet exacting standards. Thibault has watched hundreds of these procedures searching for the perfect material. This is 16 years worth of effort to find the perfect shielding material for a human mission to Mars. We have learned that a material with high hydrogen is very good. Luckily for the engineers, hydrogen can come in several forms. The astronauts' food supply, drinking water, or even human waste. One shield is made of a surprisingly familiar product. This is polyethylene, and that works very well for radiation shielding. Polyethylene is so good, it's used by the crew of the International Space Station to line their sleeping quarters against cosmic rays. For a Mars vehicle, polyethylene will be just one ingredient of a much stronger composite material. NASA began looking at composites.